Hey friends, Dion here. I cannot wait to do this makeover with you. I found this piece actually on Facebook Marketplace and I was thrilled to actually go there and purchase it. I found another wardrobe there. I ended up buying a 1950 Chevy Deluxe as well as a 1954 Chevy pickup truck. So it Needless to say, it was a really good trip, a really good find. Um, but this piece is super tall. As you can see, I've never seen anything like this before. All the way up to the top, all the way down to the bottom. It's a gorgeous piece and we are going to make it even more gorgeous together. All right, so we're gonna work our way from this top corner in shades of yellow, including chartreuse nonetheless. Uh, it's a new color from DIY. I'm not gonna tell you the name just yet. Uh, it's gonna work its way down into a creamy orange. Then we're gonna have turquoises, different shades of like really intense blues, and we're gonna finish down with some navy. Meanwhile, all of those colors will be dispersed along each other. Whoa. I'm on a stool. <laughs> This piece is huge. So let's wish me luck. Let's get started. And I'm gonna start with my very first color is going to be this. And I'm gonna mix this. Now, this actually is a color from DIY. It's DIY paint. However, it is one of those that got kind of mixed and sampled and played around with. So I am gonna give it a shot and test it out today on this piece. Also wanted to just say that this piece is not as old as you might think that it is. When we got there to look at it, we realized by looking at the hardware and the hinges, hinges, and hard hinges, hardware, it's not as old as you think. The gentleman that we bought it from had been trying to sell it for a really long time. Um, and yeah, I had a pretty stout price on it, but it was still such a beautiful piece such a beautiful deal that I don't feel nearly, I don't feel bad about painting it at all. Um, however, it's not considered an antique. It's just not. It's not from any kind of special place. Uh, it just happens to be really gorgeous. My plan is to enhance all of these details, add a whole lot of gold, and really kind of bring it into 2022 in all of its glory. We're gonna start with this color on my tray. I'm gonna use the Caddy brush because it has these long soft bristles. And what happens when you paint with a brush with long soft bristles is they pretty much hug all of this trim. They hug it, they go around all of the little details. And this is of course just gonna be my base coat. Then I'm gonna load up my brush pretty heavily. I'm just gonna apply it kind of in a tapping motion because it's got so much depth to this piece. So I'm just gonna jump on in. I was actually a little bit surprised how well this yellow covered. I don't know why I was surprised. It's DIY paint. The coverage is flawless. My favorite colors to start a makeover with are always yellow or orange, even our mint chip. All right, so I've pulled the yellow down just a little bit to the tops of the doors, and now I'm gonna bring in a color called Old 57. Same brush, mixing it in there. I'm gonna let the colors, this is still a little bit wet, so I'm gonna let the colors mix in together. Of course, you know we're gonna get a little bit of green, right? Create this delicious green color. Come on down.
The reason I find these colors so great to start with is because I paint in so many different shades of blue. And of course, every good makeover begins with a great contrast. The yellow provides a perfect backdrop for so many of my blue colors I love to use from DIY. I'm pulling the old 57 up into the yellow and creating that warm green, kind of a spearmint color. We've got to this point. So we have a stronger yellow kind of fading across this way. It's going to be stronger in the blues. Now I've mixed a little Monet's Garden in my old 57, which is this really beautiful emerald color. So blue, green, and yellow all together on my palette together. Same brush. really cool jade color, okay? All right. Let's give you a little truth nugget. I hurt my back. It's a different day. It's the following day, but I hurt my back when I was doing something on this. And I don't know if it was when the was standing on the stool or what was going on, but right before I stopped filming, I started getting oozy, dizzy, and feeling like what just happened? That pain is pretty significant. So I went in and sure enough, I had to heat, lots of heat. It feels much better today, but I'm still going to wear this back brace uh, that Matt wears as a reminder that I need to really baby it. I need to turn slow. So if you see me working a little bit slower, I'm really trying not to do whatever I did yesterday to my back again. So as furniture painters, we do have to be very cautious of that. When I originally started painting canvas, that was one of the reasons. I needed a lower priced item in my shop, but the second reason was because my back and my neck were saying, hey girl, you need to lighten the load here. So I wanted to show you the inspiration for this piece. I brought it out here because this is a painting that sold. Um, it's very large, it's, it's uh, 60 inches tall. But what we're trying to do, or what I'm going to try to do, is create this texture on the panels and throughout. So by doing that, I'm using a brayer, which I use the one from Iron Orchid Designs and I paint with it a lot. If you follow me for a while, you've seen me do all kinds of different things with this sprayer. But I will roll this onto the panels on the piece of furniture and create lots of texture. We're gonna use lots of water. I'm also gonna kind of take the brayer and roll over the whole piece. So we're gonna have lots of layers and different pops of color going throughout. But I wanted you to see what my inspiration painting was. So you can see there are lighter areas and darker areas as well. And then the top, has a glowy, warm sky. So I'm not gonna be doing trees or anything like that. I am only looking at the texture in the water here on this abstract painting. And um, that will give you a better idea of our end game. Okay, 
So because I hurt my back, I wanna let you know I'm also gonna be using my left hand. I've got a clean caddy brush, same brush we were using, but this is gonna be a clean one. And I mixed in uh, some of our Hay Sailor, which is also a color by DIY. But then I actually added some Prussian blue. Okay, I put in some acrylic Prussian blue. Uh, I didn't wanna put in black, and so I'm gonna play around with this combination. I haven't done this before. And I just wanna have the corner be just a little bit darker, and I'm gonna pull it alongside there as well. Then I'm gonna bring back, I'm gonna bring the blue back over. Because I had to stop here, this is just kinda of where I'm at right now. Okay, let's dive in. Now that I have the actual entire piece covered with just one coat of paint, which I'm calling it my base layer, I'm gonna start pulling certain colors over others. There's really no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing, but I want you to like look, imagine the painting that I just showed you with the colors overlapping in shades of deep, rich blue and turquoises and green, and I want that pop of yellow that we have at the top. That yellow will be pulled down a little bit, and then there's going to be a lot of gold on this piece as well, highlighting all of these intricate details. So yeah, it's gonna be pretty bold. It's gonna be pretty bright. Um, it's spectacular. And I'm just trying to enhance all of these carvings. So I have the mermaid tail back with the old 57 mixed in with a little hay sailor. So the three shades of blue, I'm gonna start working my way back up and building in layers and depths of color. So far we're good with the back. Thanks for those of you that are watching me closely. I'm gonna put this slow. I think you can like slow down. I'm typically a really fast painter. So I'm all over the place, bending, stretching, lifting, doing whatever. Um, so this is a challenge. I'm glad you're here with me to remind me. So I continued to add the shades of blue, but I also added some Salty Kiss from DIY the old 57 was already on my tray, and I just started rolling into the different colors, blending and playing around. I grabbed a Thalo Blue acrylic color, which is that really bright blue too. Close-ups really show the texture that the brayer gives. A Little bit of water, a little bit of DIY paint, and so much goodness. All right, so we've done the bottom panels with the brayer, and I love the delicious texture. Uh, we will be smoothing it all out as we add in our wax and we add in our gold. But for now, I am going to pull a little bit of that texture up and that variation where the flower appliques are. And that's just going to look like me using the same exact colors sparingly in some of these little areas. So I'm going to pull that blue up in here. Oh goodness, this was not part of the plan. But here comes the yellow. More, more <laughs> yellow. <laughs> See how much it really adds to the texture? All right. Also, kind of have a cold. Do you know what? Want a tutorial? 
If you have deadlines, you gotta stick to them. <laughs> Red Oxide, it's an acrylic for Master's Touch. So this is something I'm gonna add in, because if you remember the painting, the painting that I showed you had a really deep, warm sunset just above the water. So I'm bringing in the same colors that I used in the sunset. Red Oxide, some Burnt Sienna, and a, some Neon Red. Nobody panic. Let's see how this plays out. It's just paint. It's just paint. Now that is something delicious. Right? Delicious. Let's see what we can do with this. So this is about the time where I decide we're going really bold. As soon as I saw this warm color over the turquoise, there was like a spark inside of me that went, oh yes. And then pink. And I thought, what? Why am I thinking about pink? I wasn't going to do pink. Okay, so we're making a bit of a detour and I went in and grabbed some more colors that I hadn't quite prepared myself for, but I got a dark color called Cherry Picked. So, and keeping the idea that this is kind of like a sunset glowing on the water, I decided I needed a little pink. So I got Magenta from Golden and I also grabbed DIY Cherry Picked. I'm gonna make a little bit of a color combo. I'm gonna kind of work that into this area here and then soften my pink as it pulls up and into more of the mint and the yellow. Seems like a stretch. It really does. It seems like a stretch, but let's see if we can get some pink in here. You can tell I'm totally in my jam right now. I'm forgetting that the camera is on me. <laughs> I'm forgetting that I'm supposed to be telling you what I'm doing, but I'm essentially rolling wet paint into wet paint and loving what's happening right before my very eyes.
This is the part where it gets a little bit tricky. Remember my back? So this is where I think I hurt my back yesterday. So uh, I'm gonna go real slow, but I wanna pull that burnt umber color up the sides and warm it up to the top up there. And then the birds will stay really bright and yellow in that gorgeous chartreuse color. You ready? Bear with me. Okay, carefully Dion. Carefully mama. Okay. The other part is, it's like I need a shelf right here. Like, could you hold this table please? Thank you, or an assistant. So I'm gonna do a second coat of the yellow right here in the center. And then we're gonna warm up the edges. And I am using my water girl just for a light mist so the color goes on a little bit smoother. See, I need to set my table. I need to set this down. <laughs> keep brushing this yellow on. Careful to move. I'm gonna move real slow, take my time, and not rush. <clears throat> that is a little bit challenging for me, truly. From DIY that will be coming out really soon. I'm just gonna apply it in a single layer kind of right here around the birds and the flowers. chartreuse kind of the icing on the cake so instead of just leaving it there I'm standing here staring at it guys we still have all the gold we're gonna add and we also have the wax that we're gonna add so all of this is pretty bright right now but we're gonna bring it down a notch when we add our wax but because I'm loving this so much and because this is sparking my own creativity I'm gonna pull the chartreuse down onto the hardware Highlighted a few of the flowers. I'm gonna bring it down onto some hardware. I will, of course, add the gold on the hardware as well. And with a color like chartreuse, a little goes a long way, am I right? I painted a lot of pieces of furniture in the last 11, 12 years. I'm always trying to do something I haven't done before because I get bored easily and I want to spark imagination and creativity within you all as well. A piece like this would not be for everybody, but it will be for somebody. I'm 
would definitely be for somebody. I'm gonna get the gold. Once this is all dry, we're gonna have some fun with that. Like I said, it won't be for everybody, but it will be for somebody. I'm gonna show you a good view of the bottom because I know that's really hard to see down in the camera. So I brought in the burnt umber in here with that neon red. And then I finished off just touching a little bit of black along the bottom. Now, I have a feeling some of you are still not sold on this one. I'm gonna get the gold when everything is completely dry. I'm probably gonna to need to wait a few hours or maybe even till tomorrow. And then my wax. And that's where all of the goodness comes together. This is about the time that I wanted to do a little skipping, running and jumping, but I was careful not to do that, of course, because of my back. But the colors, my goodness. Such a great reminder for why I do what I do and what got this business started in the very first place. Functional art, there is nothing like it. And the way that the colors work together complement one another and the idea of creating a one-of-a-kind piece of furniture it's everything to me all right my friends i took a long break still have cough drops it's time for gold you can see that when it dries it's a little bit lighter we have lots of great texture i'm very happy with it but it definitely needs to shine up a little bit. Now this is called Golden Ticket. This is a liquid patina from DIY. If you're going to use um, a different kind, just make sure that you water it down. It needs to be pretty thin, otherwise it will completely cover up the color of paint that you are painting over. I don't want it covered up completely. I want it just to kind of do a thin glaze over it so the under colors are showing as well. So I'm gonna use my uh, short stop brush. This is from Paint Pixie of the Turquoise Iris collection. And it's going to give me, it has little short, stiff bristles. So I have more control over where I want my gold. And I'm gonna start right here with the hardware. I'm gonna do a really sheer coat first because I can always add, but it's harder to take away. So brushing off most of it, I'm gonna lightly go over the piece of hardware. Since the bristles are short and stiff, I have a little bit more control over where I apply it. Just giving it a little bit of shimmer. Some areas are gonna be heavier than others. really be intentional about where I'm adding the gold because it would be really easy just to put a layer of gold over all of this. But of course, I want all of that bright pink and bright red and all of the yellow and orange. Well, gosh, we have every color of the rainbow here. Um, but the chartreuse would be easy to cover up. So I have to be really careful. So I'm taking the little bead trim and then I'm also taking the frame mold and I'm just lightly going over that. You can of course see it better when it's over a color like blue, but I'm highlighting the frame around the wood panels on the doors. I'm also adding them onto the hinges. On each side, there are two, there's two for each door. 
And then continuing this little beaded area here, this great pattern goes all the way down. I'm gonna pick up where I left off here. And then figure out where up there I wanna highlight. Kind of dry brushing. It's kind of cool because anywhere you look at it, there's a little bit of shimmer. The gold really highlights and adds a luxurious feel to this finish. I know it's busy. Some people would call it gaudy. I think it looks fabulous. All right, so the paint has cured. We've brought it inside and put it on the staging wall, but now it's time for me to add the clear wax. I originally thought I would be adding clear wax and then darkening around and creating more shadow, but I'm not gonna lie. I think that this piece, which I'm going to name Velvet Honey, isn't that fun? Has single-handedly taken over every piece I've done in the last 12 years and become my favorite ultimately my absolute favorite. So instead of adding the black wax, I decided to leave with just the clear and continue that intensity of the bold colors. So um, what will happen basically with the clear, the colors will be just a little bit even brighter. Um, being on the staging wall, the lighting's pretty good in here, but what I'm gonna do is coat the entire piece with clear. So it's gonna take a little while. <laughs> Uh, but I'm going to get started here in just one sec and then all clear, let it dry, let it cure, get the photos, get it for sale or keep it. Oh gosh, this is going to be a tough one. I'm going to use the little C brush. It is from Paint Pixie and then I'm going to use clear wax from DIY Paint. A little goes a long way and I know I'm going to need a lot more than this. So I'm going to have to open up a new can. A little goes a long way and I'm just going to start in and just kind of pressing all of the wax into all the little grooves, making sure I get pretty good coverage. And then I'll wipe it back to make sure there are no clumps or blobs of wax in there. I'm going to take my time. I like having a window beside me because I can kind of look to the side and see uh, where I am and make sure I don't miss any spaces. But you'll notice that the color will get a little bit brighter, but not too much. It's wet, so once it dries, it will kind of go back to the original color that it is that you see in, the, the color that you see in the can, what I'm trying to say. This Girl Velvet Honey has definitely moved straight up my list of favorite pieces ever. I cannot wait to see which home will receive her. But again, I am not really going to be very sad if she sticks around. Don't she look amazing on this wall? I truly hope that you enjoyed this makeover even half as much as I enjoyed actually doing the makeover. But something that I would say, if this is too much color for you, you can soften your shades of each color by selecting colors that have a little bit more gray in them. So it would still be similar, but it would be toned down. Or you could add the black wax or even a white wax, and that would give it more of a pastel look. Whatever you choose, make sure it's you, your style, your way, <laughs> but I really truly hope that this helps you. For more tutorials, go to theturquoiseiris.com.